this is a question I get asked a lot as well. And and when you look at the barefoot runners, like there is really, and, and there's an underground, you know, the barefoot Ken Bob and that whole group of people. Um, and I've, I've talked to many of them. Most of them run on hard surfaces. They do. They run on the roads. I mean, the, ro the barefoot running races are on the roads. There's a barefoot running society now that's developed with state chapters, and I've been to some of the meetings. It, it, and I'm not saying they run exclusively on the roads, but they run on the roads. Um, and what I was saying to you is I think you can safely run on the roads, but you have to make your legs bring even softer. So it's a little bit more work when you're running on a harder surface. Do I think that it's the only way to run? No. I think you can run barefoot, really. I believe you can run barefoot on any surface. Were we meant to run on those hard surfaces? We didn't evolve to run on those hard surfaces, but can you adapt to it? I've seen plenty of people do it without injury. I just think you have to be probably even more careful in how you bring your, your, your mileage up on those harder surfaces because you have to work harder. That's, I run exclusively on hard surfaces barefoot and I haven't been injured. But I'm, I, I do think that there's a caveat to that. You have to take it very slow and you have to listen to your body. Yeah, I would just echo what I, Irene was saying is it's an adaptation and a learning <laughs> process. If you look at even cultures around the world that are truly barefoot developing parts of the world, there are a lot of them that are basically stone and they're running around barefoot, but they've lived that way. Um, I think once you really learn that, you know, what Danny Abshire is talking about, just that afferent feedback, you know, when your foot feels the ground, and that's a learning process, you know, if you've shut that off for years, it takes a while to develop that back. You know, you're actually, you can run on these sharp, rocky trails, but you, you know what's happening even before your foot hits the ground. You know, that's not day one. That's after you've worked on things a while. So there's a lot of hard you know, surfaces, you'd be like, there's no way you're going to run in this piece of Kevlar or a five finger or a barefoot. That's going to hurt maybe day one. But actually, once you've done it for a few months, your your foot just actually just adapts. And you don't have to think about it. It's just happening innately. It's like if you were to jump off of a table onto the ground, a hard floor in your bare foot, the first time you did that, the impact forces would be pretty high. But after about three tries, actually, you've you've just learned it. And you're like a cat. So I don't think there's one answer for that. It's all what feels good. Well, again, you know, I think early caveman figured out that his feet were cold without some kind of covering, you know. I think people found out that they were on hot stones, you know. We needed some kind of thermal protection from the ice and from the, uh, from the heat. And so it was consequently natural to have some covering for the foot. You just don't want that covering, no matter what it is, to obstruct the natural movement of the beauty of the foot. And that's what's gone so wrong for so many years is this rigidity and control and stability and yada yada with all that. So it's, we do, we do need to have, this is a yada yada thing. Yada yada. Right, Jay and I have done that a couple of times. I like that. Um, but, um, you know, practically, and I know Irene, you, you know, you're a proponent, um, and I know there's probably some other proponents of barefoot running in here. Um, we, we did evolve to run on those natural surfaces, and I think that's the best place to do so. You can train yourself to run on stone or concrete or whatever, um, but I guarantee you one thing, that's a small percentage of this world, and I think it's a great training tool, but again, that's why we developed the Newton, to try to have a, a shoe that you could have the, have the characteristics, ideally, characteristics. You don't have to bend and deform the shoe, you can absorb uh, sh excessive shock from this hard surface, not this beautiful golf course putting green. I tell you one thing right now, if the whole world was a beautiful, pristine golf course putting green, we wouldn't need footwear, right? And if it was 70 degrees every day, you know, we wouldn't have to deal with that. But we live in a man-made world and it's unnaturally hard surfaces. And that's, I think that's the big deal that, that we came up with because we tried to build a better product. And I think we succeeded in doing so. The problem is, you want to go to get A to Z so fast, and you don't even know how to sense for the ground. Most people that get injured trying to transition to form too quickly are simply hitting the ground with enormous impact. They're pretending that they were in their soft shoe. A lot of the same people that are trying to get uh, into barefoot running, they maybe put the Vibrams on, they get the same injuries because they didn't even adapt. I see people heel striking in the five fingers. So, if you don't take the time to understand what is really right, understand your elastic recoil and this sensory input of landing lightly, we are all striking. All the people you deal with come in with injuries. They're, they're hitting the ground with enormous, whether they're small or large people. 
they're hitting the ground with enormous impact because they cannot feel the ground. So again, the first thing is understanding your body, understanding how you move across the surface, and running with protection. So it is a huge uh, uh, mental change, but the mental affects the physical. And if we're blocked off from here from the head down, and all we're doing is no pain, no gain, and push, 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 you're, you're going to be chronically injured, you know, so. Excellent. Uh, question number two over here, someone. So what was the thinking behind elevating the hill in, in now what we call the traditional running shield? I love this answer because I've asked it to every single person in any, ru in any running company in, in, in uh, footwear division, and this is the answer I get. Um, many, 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 many years ago, uh, there was a guy who uh, who was a, a little cobbler, and he made this little thing to put in some foot of royalty, and uh, it was rigid because they didn't really know about flexible materials back then. And the person said, "Wow, this is hard to like walk in because it doesn't really like allow your, you know, ball your foot to roll over." So this little cobbler, I guess they were called cobblers back then, decided to uh, you know add a little bit of a heel lift, and what that allowed it to do is put a toe rocker to roll the shoe over. Um, and then so he basically taught his kid. Um, to do the same thing, and then his kid was in England somewhere, you know, early seven, late 1700s, early 1800s, uh, and then, you know, he told his kid and his kid and his kid, and then his kid now works at Nike. So it's this, this, this like, ridiculous perpetuation of we have no idea why we're doing it, but we're going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it, and so now we're stuck. Because we're sitting there saying that we have to, you know, think about it. it's all about this idea that, you know, we want to discourage this, this very anterior heel contact. Well, guess what? Every single person in this room is adapted to that shoe. Right. And so, again, they're terrified because they don't want to be the company to say, okay, guess what? 2011, all of our shoes are flat. They can't. They're not going to sell shoes because people are going to get hurt. Okay, because you know people want to run. I mean, runners are we're psychotic, right? Okay, everybody raise your hand. All right, um, you know. You want to be able to train and to tell your clients come in your store to say, look, we're going to take a break from running for six months and have you exclusively work on things to correct your imbalances and then run, I'm going next door. Okay? So it's a challenge. And, and so I think you know, it, it's taking these pieces and, and gradually, like we said, gradually incorporating changes in. So yeah, th that's the best answer I've got for why we, we have things the way they are. Oh, yeah, everybody walks more than they run. So one of the fastest running categories is the so-called toning shoe. Is that a fad? What's the panel think of those things? I hope it's a fad. I can probably speak for that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a real answer. So that, that, that shoe was tested at the University of Delaware, and I'm not, not at liberty. I didn't test it, I just want you to know. Um, and I'm not really at liberty to talk much about it because that individual is not. But all I can say to you is it was a shoe that was tested, and this is public, on five individuals um, running on a treadmill for some 50 footsteps. And if you put anyone in a perturbation shoe of any type, the MBT shoe, and you put electrodes on their muscles, you're going to see the electrical activity of that muscle increase because it's a, it's a novel skill. So um, that information was taken and parlayed into the, um, the butt commercial, is what I call it. And I don't know if you guys saw the commercial online. There was a breast commercial. Did anybody else see it? <laughs> Did anyone see it? Okay, so they had these two breasts in a bra, and pardon my, you know, I, I hope I'm not speaking on a turn here, but one breast was speaking to the other breast, and she was saying, you know, I'm really, I'm really jealous because the butt's getting all the attention, and I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. And this individual who did this research really very nice, you know, with no idea of how this would be taken and interpreted, was very upset about it. So that's the story on the easy toner. Only in America, folks. Yep. <laughs> Oh. Uh.